Hi there. We've been using sources to provide voltage to our circuits in a number of earlier projects, but it's probably time to get a little bit more detailed about what we mean by a source and how they work. For now, we'll just talk about ideal sources. As you might suspect, any real source, like a battery, won't be ideal. However, in many cases, we can model our real-world source as if it's ideal, or at least to an acceptable level of accuracy. Later on, we'll talk about some non-ideal source models. Sources are devices which provide energy or power to a circuit. By definition, the energy that a source provides to the circuit originates from outside the circuit. Usually, this energy is created from a non-electrical source. For example, a battery provides electrical energy by performing a chemical reaction. A generator creates electrical energy from a mechanical source, for example, by using steam or water pressure to turn a turbine. We can have two basic types of sources, voltage sources and current sources. We're relatively familiar with voltage sources. Batteries and the analog discovery voltage and waveform generator instruments all act like voltage sources. We'll talk about current sources in some later projects after we introduce transistors. As I mentioned in the introduction, we'll only talk about what are called ideal sources for now. Ideal voltage sources are usually indicated on circuit schematics by these symbols. The symbol to the left is slightly more general than the one to the right. The symbol on the right indicates a battery and is only used to represent constant voltages. The symbol on the left can be used to represent either constant or time varying voltages. In both cases, the polarity of the source is indicated on the sketch, and the value of the voltage, either a constant or a function of time, is indicated next to the symbol. Ideal voltage sources provide the specified voltage regardless of anything else. For an ideal source, this is true no matter how much current is being provided by the source. The amount of current provided by an ideal voltage source is completely determined by the circuit the source is connected to. A side effect of this is that it's theoretically possible for an ideal source to provide infinite power, as we'll see later. Ideal current sources are represented on circuit schematics by this symbol. The direction of the current and the value of the current, either a constant or a function of time, are shown on the diagram. Ideal current sources provide the specified current regardless of anything else. For an ideal source, this is true no matter what the voltage difference is across the source. The voltage difference across an ideal current source is completely determined by the circuit the source is connected to. As with ideal voltage sources, a side effect of this is that it's theoretically possible for an ideal current source to provide infinite power. Now let's look at a couple of quick examples. The first example is of an ideal voltage source with a voltage of 5 volts which is connected across some unspecified circuit component. We want to figure out what we can about the voltage V across the circuit component and the current I through the component. The voltage source always has a voltage of 5 volts across it. Therefore, the voltage V across this circuit element has to be 5 volts, regardless of what the circuit component is. However, we don't know anything about the current I delivered by the source since we don't know anything about the circuit component we've connected to the source. Our second example is an ideal current source, also connected to some unspecified circuit component. Since the current source always delivers 2 amps, we know that the current I through the component is 2 amps. However, we don't know anything about the voltage across the circuit component. The voltage across the source is set entirely by the component it's connected to, and we don't know anything about the circuit element itself. 